Good morning, Isaac. I have something very important to discuss with you. Can we talk now? Good morning, Kelly. You're like having a bit tense. Is everything all right? There's something I need you to do for me, Isaac. It's very difficult. What is it? You know you can ask me anything. You know how you're supposed to marry my daughter next month, yes? Well, I need you to stay away from your wedding, Isaac. What? Stay away from the wedding? What are you talking about? I didn't get it. I need you to not attend the wedding, Isaac. I need you to disappear. Wait a minute. This has to be some kind of joke. Why would I not show up at my own wedding? I'm the groom, for God's sake. There is no wedding without me. You can't just ask me to vanish. I am not joking, Isaac. I'm begging you. Please. Please don't come to the wedding. What? You're serious? You're really asking me not to come to the wedding? Me, the groom, the man who loves your daughter more than anything? Yes, Isaac. That's what I'm asking you. And I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. This is insane. This makes no sense. Why don't you want me to come to the wedding? Why do you have to disappear? The wedding is in less than a month. You can't just drop this bomb on me. Tell me what's going on. All right, all right. I suppose you deserve an explanation. The truth is, my daughter is pregnant, Isaac. What? Paula is pregnant? Yes, she is. I took her to the hospital yesterday because she was feeling sick. They told me she's been pregnant for three months already. But Isaac, you're not the father of the baby. What? The father of the baby is a young man named Roderick. He's an old friend of the family and of Paula's. They used to date when they were in middle school. My daughter is carrying the child of her old flame. What the hell? So you're telling me that Paula cheated on me with this guy? Don't say cheated. It's not that simple. They were in love when they were kids. But then Roderick had to move away with his parents. We lost touch with them until he came back a few weeks ago. That's when he and Paula rekindled their romance, I guess. What do you mean? Rekindled their romance? She was engaged to me, remember? She said yes to me. I know, I know. But things are complicated. And she's now pregnant. Now she says she wants to marry Roderick. And not you. He's her first love, Isaac. And her first boyfriend. And the father of the baby. She loves him very much. And I want her to be happy. He's the father of my first grandchild, too. I want him to be a part of our family. Don't you think it's beautiful, Isaac? To marry your first love? Are you kidding me? This is a nightmare, not a fairy tale. So you're saying that Paula is pregnant with another man's baby and she's going to dump me and marry him instead? No, no, that's not what I'm saying. She's still going to marry you, Isaac. What? She's going to marry you. On paper, at least. She's not really going to cancel the wedding with you. She's going to be your wife. Legally. What? Why would you do that? Well, you see, Roderick is not in the best situation right now. He just quit his job, and he doesn't have a stable income. He doesn't even know where his parents are. He's not ready to be a husband or a father. Marrying him would be romantic, but... Not very realistic. He can't provide for Paula and the baby. I don't believe this. This is ridiculous. That's why she needs you, Isaac. You have a good job, a nice house, and a bright future. You can give her and the baby a comfortable life. She needs you to be her husband. In name only, of course. She'll marry Roderick at the ceremony, but you'll be the one who signs the papers. You'll be the one who takes care of them. You'll be the one who sacrifices everything for them. This is insane. This is absurd. You're asking me to be a cuckold? You're asking me to give up my love, my dignity, my happiness for a woman who betrayed me and a child who's not mine? How can you ask me to do that? How can you ask me to not come to the wedding and then ask me to be the husband? How can you ask me to do this? Oh, by the way, Paula has decided to raise her child with Roderick after the baby is born. So she wants to live with him in your new house. What? 
You mean the new house that I bought for me and Paula to move in next month? He's going to live in my house? Yes, that house. She wants to make it her home with her new little family. Just the three of them. That's why you have to keep living in your old apartment or find a new one if you prefer. Hold on a second. This is too much. You're not only taking away my wedding, but also my new house. I paid for both of them, you know. I even got a loan for the house. Don't be so selfish. It's only money. You have a good job and a high salary, right? Think of it as your wedding gift to my daughter. What? My wedding gift? Yes, your wedding gift. And your baby shower gift too. That's all I wanted to tell you. Give up your wedding day. The new house to my daughter, her baby and her true love, all right? I'll let you be Paula's husband on paper. Wait a minute. Do you hear yourself? You sound like a mad woman. You sound like a villain from a horror movie. Of course I hear myself. What's so hard to understand about what I said? You're still going to be Paula's husband on paper, which means you have to pay for her expenses and the baby's needs. You're going to be the breadwinner of our family. So do your duty as a good husband, all right? Oh my god. Are you serious? Are you sane? I'm starting to worry about your mental health. You're really 100% serious. Was what I said so shocking? Well, excuse me. I need to... I need some time to process this. I want to talk to Paula about this too. There's a lot of things I need to sort out. Well, hurry up then. The wedding is coming soon, you know. Paula, your mother told me everything. Is it true that you're pregnant and that I'm not the father, but some old friend of yours and that you want him to stand by your side at the wedding instead of me? Is that what you really want, Paula? Oh, mom told you? Yes, it's all true. I'm going to meet Roderick later to plan the wedding. You don't have to bother anymore, Isaac. I can't wait to see how Roderick will look in his suit. Paula, are you out of your mind? How can you say these things? What do you mean? You mean to tell me that you're going to show up at our wedding with some other guy? And that you're going to live with him in our new apartment because he knocked you up? And you don't see anything wrong with that? What's wrong with you? Are you jealous? Did you want to marry me that badly, Isaac? Why don't we have another wedding after the baby is born? I'm not jealous, Paula. I'm disgusted. How could you do this to me? How could you have a baby with another man while you were engaged to me? You were so excited about the wedding? I thought you didn't care that much. It's always the bride who gets all the attention anyway. But you know what, Isaac? Roderick is much more attractive than you. He'll make a better groom for me. He'll make my Instagram followers jealous. That's why I want Roderick to be the one who marries me. That's not the point, Paula. The point is that you betrayed me with another man and got pregnant with this child. And that you want to take over the wedding and the apartment that I paid for with my hard-earned money? That's the point, Paula. Well... I didn't plan to get pregnant, but it happened, and it's not like we were married yet. So what does it matter if I had some fun with Roderick? It's my life. It's none of your business, Isaac. What? You're still going to be my husband, Isaac. Once we sign the papers, you'll be my legal spouse. So don't worry, okay? And as for me living in the new apartment with Roderick, it's for the sake of the baby. The baby that's coming. The baby deserves to be with his or her real father. Don't you agree? You can just help out as the second father. You know, what's the big deal? What do you mean, what's the big deal? How can you? Oh, and there's something else I need to tell you. Dad wants you to work harder for him once we get married. What? You already help out with the family business whenever you have some free time. Right, Isaac? Well, once you marry me, you'll be part of the family for real. And that means you'll have more responsibility in the family business. Dad said he's going to give you more work. He even said he's thinking of expanding the business. So, you better be ready for that. Wait a minute. What are you talking about? 
He's going to give me more work? I was only helping him as a favor because he said he was short-staffed. That was my time off, Paula. I was working like a slave for him. And for free too. If he gives me more work, I won't have time for my own job. Well, he's having some trouble with his business. And he needs more help. That's what family is for, right? To help each other out. Hey, answer the phone. What is the meaning of this? Good morning. Is something the matter? What do you mean is something the matter? Paula says that she wasn't able to contact you, which is why I contacted you myself. Oh, Paula. She's speaking the same language as me, but for some reason, we can't quite communicate with each other, which is why I'm temporarily blocking her. What do you think you're doing at such a crucial time? When Paula and Roderick went to discuss the wedding ceremony with the organizers, they were told that the whole ceremony has been cancelled. The cancellation fee was paid and the paperwork was taken care of. They said they were told these unbelievable stories. Just what in the world is going on here? Oh, that? I cancelled the wedding ceremony. <laughs> oh, you were the one who cancelled it. Why would you do such a thing? Um, because I won't be going to the wedding. Do you have a problem with that? Problem? I mean, it wasn't going to be my wedding. But that of Paula and the guy she cheated on me with, right? I have no duty to pay for the wedding ceremony of other people. It's my money, so it shouldn't be a problem, right? My wedding, my money. You say it like everything is yours and only yours. What about Paula and Roderick? It was their wedding as well. But I was the one who paid for the wedding, right? You said you would pay for half of it after the wedding. As a wedding gift to me and Paula. But at the present moment, it was me who had paid for everything. Well, I guess that's true. But you can't just cancel the wedding without telling us anything. Paula was so looking forward to the wedding. This is very cruel of you. I'm shocked. I was looking forward to the wedding as well, until last week when you told me not to come to it. Anyways, I'm not going to pay for the wedding of someone else. If you want to have a wedding, then have Paula and her friend pay for it. You just have to plan a new wedding from the start. But this wedding was in the making for a long time. It's such a waste. Do you realize what you've done? By the way, is the wedding ceremony the only thing you want to talk to me about? Is there anything else you need to say? Huh? What do you mean, anything else? There are a lot of things, right? Like how I sold the new apartment or stuff. What? You sold the new apartment? Yup. Luckily, I was able to get rid of the loan as well. A friend of mine works at a real estate company, so it was thanks to him. It was a well-positioned plot of land, so apparently they were immediately able to find a buyer. What? Why would you do such a thing? That was supposed to be where Paula and my grandchild were going to live. I sold it because it was my house and land. I paid for everything over there as well, so it was my property. I have no use for a house I'm not going to live in. Your actions are so selfish. Just what are you thinking? Oh, speaking of selfish actions, I'm not going to be able to help you with your husband's business anymore. I got rid of everything that I made. What? The manuals and everything else that I introduced to optimize work efficiency, all of it. Both the physical and digital information, I deleted it. Tell your husband to have good luck with going back to the state the business was in before I came in to help. What? Why? What do you mean why? I was never even an employee of the company and was just an outsider. Isn't it up to me as to what I do with what I make? This is going to be bad for us. Now they won't even be able to go about everyday tasks. They can't expand their business either if they're going back to their former state. Don't you think that the fact that the business can't even go about everyday tasks now that they don't have the work I did for them just as the boss's daughter's fiancé? And that I was forced to do the work for no pay is a bit messed up. Come back and put everything back in its place. Everyone's going to suffer if my husband can't do his job anymore. Sorry, but I don't want to do any such thing. And what do you mean everyone's going to suffer? I'm certainly not and don't think the employees are either. 
because they're going to be quitting tomorrow. Huh? They're quitting? To be honest, the working conditions at your husband's company are perverse to the extreme. There aren't many employees, which means that each person has to do a huge amount of work. It's common for employees to work overtime until late at night and they don't even get paid for it. The salary itself is low as well. Not to mention that your husband makes me a complete outsider to as much work or even more as a regular employee. There are plenty of other things that probably touch on the law. Which is why I told the employees about how much money they would be paid at other companies in the same industry and about how employees are treated and how they're paid at my actual job. I even introduced them to a company an acquaintance of mine works at. I gave them the name card of a recruiter to this company as well since apparently they were hiring. They seem to be very happy with what I had done for them and it seems they're all going to turn in their letters of resignation tomorrow at once. What? Hold on a minute. Apparently, they're going to use up all their paid vacation before they quit though. No one's going to come anymore. But how is my husband supposed to continue his business now? What are we going to do with no employees? What are you going to do about this? I don't know. It's not my problem. What your husband does for now. Probably the Department of Labor Standards will decide what to do with him and his business because I reported everything that was happening at your husband's company to them earlier today. What? What do you mean? The Department of Labor Standards? I went to the Labor Standards Inspection Office with proof of illegally long working hours and of unpaid overtime. They'll probably pay a visit sooner or later. Just what have you done? If the Department of Labor comes to inspect us, then the company will be truly ruined. Oh, so you did actually realize that what your husband was doing was illegal? Not only that, but what are our neighbors and relatives going to say when they find out? What am I going to tell my sister-in-law when the company that's been running for over a hundred years collapses? It's alright. You don't need to worry about that. What? I already explained the situation to all your relatives. Both about what happened to me and what happened with you people. What? That's none of your business. The wedding was cancelled, so I explained the whole situation to them in detail and also apologized for cancelling the wedding so abruptly. I gave them printed out copies of you and Paula's conversations with me on text. They were actually quite sympathetic to what I had to say but they accepted that the wedding had to be cancelled once I explained everything to them. They told me and Paula getting married was out of the question. Thank God the whole family isn't insane. Oh, wait. Marriage cancellation? So you're not even going to marry Paula anymore? Um, wasn't that obvious? There's no way I'm marrying Paula after everything you people did. The fact that this happened before we got married is the silver lining. Oh, I'll contact you again at a later time with the alimony for the marriage cancellation. A lawyer will probably get in contact with you. Please talk to my lawyer and not me directly from now on. Wait a minute. Why you? Do you think you can just get away with it after everything you've done to us? There's a baby inside Paula and you went out of your way to destroy our company? How cruel must you be? You're saying you don't care about Paula or the baby? It's none of my business whether the whole house collapses or not. I'm scared by the very fact that people like you even exist. What? Both of you and Paula. Who gets pregnant with another man even though she's getting married? And after that says she's going to appear at our wedding ceremony with the other guy and leave at the apartment that was supposed to be ours with him? And you, the parents who supported all of this madness and who treated me like some sort of slave. All of you should go to hell. What do you mean treat me like a slave? We never meant to do such a thing. What was I to you people, if not a slave? You tried to steal the wedding ceremony and the apartment I paid for. And you even tried to make me pay for Paula and her family's living expenses in return for letting me be her husband? Your husband was even trying to make me do even more work for him when he was never even paying me. How much do you have to treat me like a piece of garbage until you people are satisfied? Oh, it's not like that. It's a misunderstanding. That's not what I meant when I said those things to you. You're making it seem like we're evil or something. Making it seem like we're evil? So you're saying that you aren't? Then is it alright? I do the same things to you? 
Suppose I had an ex-girlfriend who also happened to be an old friend of mine. I accidentally make her pregnant. So now I'm going to go to the wedding ceremony with her instead of Paula and live with her in the new apartment instead of Paula. Oh, and I want Paula to pay for all of it also. I let her be my wife on paper so I also want her to pay for our living expenses and the expenses for raising the child. Lastly, I want her to work at my family business for no pay as well. What if I told you that you're saying that you would just forgive me? Because that's the situation from my point of view. But you're a man. And Paula is a lady. <laughs> it seems there's no point talking to you. Anyways, my lawyer is going to be contacting you soon. I think. Please don't contact me directly from now on. Wait, I'm sorry. Let's talk things through, why don't we? I think we both have the wrong end of the stick. Please, talk to my lawyer about it. Oh, and I found out about this afterwards. But it seems like this Roderick of yours has a wife and children. He apparently has three kids. What? What? Well, that's all I have to say, I guess. Goodbye. After that, I cut off all contact with Paula and her family. I let the lawyer that my manager recommended handle everything. He told me that when he met with them a few days later, Paula and her mom tried to justify their actions by saying that I was supposed to be Paula's husband, so they had the right to depend on me. Paula's dad spouted some nonsense like he had reported me to the Department of Labor, so we were even. I didn't know whether to laugh or cry. Roderick, meanwhile, kept begging his real wife for forgiveness after she found out everything. He got an earful from my parents too. I told the lawyer to be as harsh as possible with them, and in the end, Paula had to pay me $10,000 in alimony, which covered the wedding cancellation fee, while Roderick had to pay alimony to both me and his wife, who divorced him as soon as she could. He sobbed and pleaded with her not to leave him, but she got a restraining order against him and severed all ties. After that, the Department of Labor raided Paula's father's business along with several lawsuits from former employees who claimed unpaid overtime. This led to the downfall of his company. He tried to ask his relatives for help, but they all turned their backs on him. The family had to sell their house, and now they live in a rundown apartment. They lost touch with Roderick, and now Paula cries all the time because she doesn't know what to do with the baby. She sends me letters through my lawyer, asking me to help her, but I ignore them. She brought this on herself. I hope she learns her lesson and lives an honest life from now on, without exploiting anyone. As for me, I was depressed for a while, because I realized how bad I was at judging people's character. But my parents and friends and colleagues supported me, and I feel much better now. I'm back to my old life, before I met Paula. My goal now is to forget about those horrible people and improve myself so that I can find someone who truly loves me.